This channel started messing with extremely low tunings. Hopefully I don't have to remind you of the saga of increasing scale lengths. But from the beginning, I've always had one lingering idea for messing with these low frequencies. There were already pianos that went even one more half step below that existed well before my first subcontra bass video. Pianos themselves have thicker and longer strings than any commercially available bass guitar strings, including Kalium. But I was a little scared to order them because they are such a vastly different build, meaning I'd have to figure out the logistics of an entirely custom bass just to utilize them. It'd be extremely hard to try and adapt them to fit an existing bass, but nowadays we've done arguably crazier things. We can start simple since gen sticks are a thing. We've seen several YouTubers outsource a few of their own already. All we're doing is doubling the length of your typical bass with a six foot piano string. We all are aware of the importance of that distance by now. So let's get to building, or skip to this timestamp to go ahead and hear the demo without any context. This is Kevin from Said Too Much. I thought it'd be hard to find a company that sells individual piano strings without putting me through a lengthy email chain to confirm I actually knew what I was doing with it, so I wouldn't give any bad publicity if I damaged anything or myself. But I found one called Vanda King's Piano Showcase that advertised temporary strings while you wait for the appropriate custom order ones to arrive. Sorting through their store, I picked two strings after carefully reading their specs and suggestions, something that admittedly might be confusing if you don't have some awareness of appropriate string lengths and gauges. Bass guitar strings are strung up to 50 pounds of tension, but piano strings are strung upwards of double that. Matching that, I ordered a .212 to simulate the lowest C0 of the Bosendorfer Imperial Piano, and a .134 for its E0 below a 4-string bass. Since we're doubling the scaling, this would make the nut basically the new 12th fret, while still representing its traditional E1. They're about the same cost as any of the other extreme strings I've bought in the past, and without any questions at all, they shipped quick from Canada all the way down to Florida. I was ecstatic. They have a loop where the single copper winding stops at one end to consider for the build, and the other hex steel core end around .050 gauge is thin enough to fit in a base machine head, although it is a little stiff. Knowing I need the design to revolve around these strings, we can now move on. I took a trip to my local home improvement store, searching for inspiration on construction materials. I already had a six-foot wood plank in mind, opting for pine, but I was worried about how much it could possibly bow under all the tension. Luckily, I stumbled across some aluminum L-beams the same dimensions that I figured I could attach to the sides as makeshift truss rods if I need them. Grabbing some flex glue I've heard so much about, I was done shopping. I already had some spare parts laying around, including base machine heads and individual saddles from several base mod projects, and was ready to build. I started by cutting a point at one end that I thought would comedically resemble a fence slat and let me install the base machine head in the center of the board. Grabbing the thickest string, there was quite a bit of link to the steel end, so I took a rough estimate and trimmed it, finding to my relief that it stretched to a comfortable place for the saddle to screw in place. Another screw installed an appropriate distance away I thought could solve the problem of the winding starting so late, and hooking the loop end to it and tightening everything to see where we're at, it's reasonable. Although the tension did of course end up bending it. Seeing how much bowing we got in this test, it turns out we're probably going to need to glue those L-beams after all, which turned out really simple using that hyped flex glue. I really didn't need to use clamps. Trimming the excess beam, I turned to installing the input jack, freehand routing out a cavity. I got upset at how many times the Dremel slipped on me creating horrible nicks, however. Even sanding the area when all was said and done, it's still unsightly to me. But with so much more wood real estate, it's not hard to overlook that area, and I'm more comfortable with it now. Measuring things out to install a wood nut the next day, I had the thought that maybe I should countersink the saddle. The action just seemed too high at that end, and it wasn't in that sweet spot where I could lower it that much before hitting a wall. I'm happy with my decision, but in hindsight, I may have went too deep. There's always the option to shim it later if I really wanted to, though. Going back to installing the nut, I was hoping for an even 5 foot scale length, but knowing the thinner string is slightly different, meant for a different style piano, I found I was going to have to lower it to 58 inches in order to accommodate it. Not too bad though, it's still more than doubles from short scale basses scale lengths. So just using super glue to secure it and routing a quick notch I figured I'd expand later, I tried stringing it up again to see where we're at, when I ran into another problem. The height of the string coming off the peg was too high for the string to even want to sit in that groove. 
I needed a string tree, and I figured maybe a screw drilled diagonally could fix that. After being an idiot and drilling a pilot hole in the wrong spot out of impatience, I finally solved this problem, although the stiff wire makes it more difficult to work with these tight bends. Finally, I can move on to the last bit of routing for the single coil jazz bass pickup I figured I'd install vertically. I traced a spot centered around where the theoretical 36th fret would be, routed out a lot of wood seeing as how tall this pickup is, made a hole in the back for the wiring, and found that it basically clipped in snug without the need for mounting screws from that crude cut. Works for me. I decided to do a simple wiring, connecting the signal and ground wires directly to the jack. Real quick, drilling a route to install a ground wire for the bridge I forgot about, I thought everything was set up and ready to go. Hearing a bit of noise plugging it in, I thought maybe the two aluminum beams also need to be grounded in order to stop it. I ended up connecting them with aluminum foil and connected each of the ground wires to one of them. Plugging it back in, there was still a little bit of noise, and I realized that single coils are going to be naturally noisy, and we may need to figure out a proper shielding solution in the future. An interesting thing is that the hum slightly changes when I rotate it in my lap. I marked out the octave spots and some fifths using a tuner, guessing the actual subcontra open note it's tuned to based on where the harmonic sounded most pronounced somewhere near the middle of the scale length. I don't really think your normal guitar and bass fret calculators can really apply to this high action, high tension, low frequency instrument. It's more or less a guessing game to play by ear. Despite its size, it's actually lighter than any of my other guitars and basses. But it's way more awkward trying to maneuver this thing in the home studio. It is, after all, taller than me. Going back to tone, I found my gate's help, but it still shows its ugly head in high gain tones. Remember, the winding is made of copper, so although conductive, it's only the steel core that's ferromagnetic and being picked up by the magnetic pickup. So it's not a super strong signal, also considering how high I had to set the action so the string could clear the pickup at least up to the theoretical 24th fret. It's not like I can really adjust our makeshift truss rods, so boosting the signal is gonna boost the noise. Of course, I can always use other noise reduction techniques for now, and we can go ahead and just get to hearing more of it already.
what do you all think? How did you like the tones I went with? How does this thing compare to all the other one-string things you may have seen on YouTube? Usually you see me doing mods, but I'm proud to say this is the first instrument on this channel built from the ground up, despite how simple it may be. Of course, this project is far from over, and I need all of your input on this. We can experiment with different pickups, pickup positions, truss rod solutions, ergonomic solutions, and at the very least currently, shielding solutions. I have to admit, electronics are a bit of a weak spot for me. So any of you other amateur or professional luthiers out there, please help me out. One of the crazier ideas I can think of is to create levers to fret the notes all the way up to the nut, or even to fret the notes closer to the bridge if you're playing it upright. But I honestly felt like playing it horizontal like a monophonic keyboard or a lap steel guitar made it feel like an entirely new and exciting instrument. Slapping my whole hands down made it feel like a fun percussive instrument, and also made fretting that 100 pound plus tension a lot more comfortable. The idea of using a slide to create sweeping bass drops felt great too, and if you wanted a mobile solution, help me figure out a way you could possibly attach a neck strap to it. I think it turned out great just to compare the piano strings to the timbres we've already heard, but let's continue to think outside the box here. This may be the genesis of a new instrument entirely, possibly. For now though, enough said. For early video access, raw instrument tracks, and more exclusives, find our community on Patreon and consider adding your support. Said too much. <laughs>